All right, guys, we just finished up training here at Breaking Point Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in Davenport, Iowa, here with Nate Fenton and Josh Hamilton, co-owners of the gym. Uh, always a great time coming out here, getting great roles. Nate's a fantastic instructor. I always uh, bring away some good stuff that I can take back and share with the students at no cost, and obviously things that I can implement in my game. And uh, So, yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for having me out. Absolutely. Always welcome. Yeah. So, um, if one of you wants to start off just giving us a little bit of background of yourself, who you are, you know, obviously your, your role here at the gym, um, maybe some of the classes that you offer at Breaking Point. Uh, um, my name is Nate Fenton, um, co-owner of <coughs> Breaking Point Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, we kind of got this started uh, about four and a half years ago now. Um, Josh and I met training at a school together um, and trained together for a couple years. Uh, we met John Gutta and eventually Matt Layton. Started training with them, um, did that for a little while, and then uh, we were making a lot of drives out to Iowa City and Cedar Rapids. It was a, a lot of commuting and um, didn't really have a competition style of Jiu Jitsu school here in the Quad City. So, um, under the you know kind of guidance and influence of John and Matt, they uh, recommended that we open up open up a school here in the Quad City. So, uh, we did that about like I said four and a half years ago. Um, we were in a much smaller space back then, and we've expanded um, the you know last couple years and. Um, you know, we, we originally were like really catering to just like the competition jiu-jitsu kind of style of jiu-jitsu. Um, but you know, over the years, uh, we, we've kind of learned that uh, everyone can benefit from jiu-jitsu. So, you know, we're not just a competition jiu-jitsu school. I mean, we have uh, you know, like beginner's classes that are like more fundamental old school style jiu-jitsu focused. Uh, we do nogi classes, we do kickboxing classes. Um, and we do competition classes as well as just like our regular all levels classes. So we have a jiu-jitsu um, schedule that caters to every, every type of interest in jiu-jitsu um, every day of the week, uh, weekends included. And um, it's not just a gi school or just a no gi school. I mean, we did uh, some no gi training today. I'm a firm believer that um, if you train jiu-jitsu, you should train it all. Uh, you shouldn't limit yourself, just like John Donaher says, you shouldn't uh, ignore 50% of the body, right? You shouldn't ignore 50% of the, of the uniform either, right? That's Throw right. that gi on, learn a little bit, because yeah, I, I, there's a lot of this like kind of uh, new new school, new style jujitsu, uh, no gi stuff that's like, you know, the gi's a waste of time, you know, it's going to be gone years down the road. And I, I don't subscribe to that. I, I think that gi jujitsu is not, is not as exciting as like the no gi stuff that you see like at some of your pro events and like that flow grappling and all these big events are doing. I, I love that stuff. I think it's great, but I don't just want to kick the gi out the door. I, I think it's a really important part of training. It, it you know, really develops some, some grip strength and some positional awareness. Um, that is unique to the gi, but still some of that stuff translates really well to, to no gi. I mean, for years I did nothing uh, but, but gi training with a couple of no gi trainings here and there. When I take the gi off, I still feel really confident. There's a lot of stuff uh, that over the years I've had to learn that's very no gi specific, but I love it all. So like here at Breaking Point, I try to encourage everyone to, to do everything, you know, and, and to cross train. Uh, you know, we have some other small uh, schools locally and you know, I'm all about getting in there and getting some training with other people, learning from other instructors and, and seeing what the other uh, training environments are like because in, in my opinion, if you go out and um, your, your training at home is good, then when you go somewhere else, you're, you're, you may learn and appreciate what their training atmosphere is, but if you're confident, like as an instructor and a, a school owner, I'm confident in what we have to offer here and what we're doing. So I'm not intimidated by my students going out and training with other people because I know at the end of the day, they're gonna wanna come back here. So like that's kind of the atmosphere, that's kind of the culture that I put out there is like, we train hard, we push each other, we challenge each other, but at the end of the day, like we're all here to get better. Like you and I were talking before the cameras were rolling, we we're talking about just like, every day, you know, trying to get a little bit better at something and in, in jujitsu, it's what it's all about. Like you're not just going to magically make these leaps and bounds and become a monster overnight. Like it takes a lot of hard work and 1% and better every day is what we're looking for. And um, sometimes you got to get out of your, your comfort zone at your school, yeah. you know, go somewhere else and see what it's like there, get some different bodies to, to train with. Cause you know, you, you've trained enough that, you know, you know, big 280 pound guy who's like 6'10 is going to be totally different from a little, you know, 130 pound guy, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. you got, you got to kind of experience all types of jujitsu, different uh, body types and whatnot. So um, I think that's, that's my main takeaway from Breaking Point is like, I just really pride myself in, in challenging my students, challenging myself, just trying to get better every day. That's awesome, man. 
Um, and yeah, I always love coming out here because, I, like I said, getting different looks. You, Vic, uh, you guys all do things that people at my gym just don't do and don't push me in the same way. So when I come out here, I always walk away with like 10 things that I know automatically right away that I need to work on. Obviously, you're a really good instructor. You break things down step by step. Like I deep half stuff today. That was like the best I've ever had, like a system of like one thing to the next to the next, understanding deep half on like that real deep level. So uh, always a good time coming out here and learning from you guys. We'll kind of kick it to Josh and talk about about um, kind of how you got started with Breaking Point, how you met Nate. I know he kind of touched on it a little bit, but also just kind of your half of the story um, and how you became a co-owner here at Breaking Point. Well, we, I mean, we, like he said, we were training together at a different school and we, we just didn't feel like we were getting better. And honestly, most of the stuff that I was learning was almost exclusively from him, right? And so- From me, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, was from Nate. I was like, well, you know, you're you're really teaching me everything, and we were training together, and we were traveling. I mean, we probably went four or five times a week for at least a year. Out and, here to out to Iowa City. Yeah, out to, to Iowa City to, to, those guys. to get <clears throat> tougher competition and more more instruction, really, and different stuff. And uh, you know, the thing with Nate is his his knowledge is kind of encyclopedic. It's kind of creepy because um, <laughs> he remembers everything, right? Yeah. Like, uh, and from like matches, like I'll be like, oh, well, I was in this position. And he'll say, no, 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 you were here. I was like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, but you know, it was it was just a friendship thing for me, where we were traveling a lot and it was really fun. And it was like, well, you know, we should have a school because one traveling sucks, and you know, we can have our own place. And uh, you know, it was just a cool. It wasn't so much a business opportunity for us as just something we ought to do in my mind. You and know? you guys both live and work here in Davenport, right? So is that why it made sense to start the gym here? Yeah, and we have, you know, we both have regular jobs. And uh, so we just we just went for it. And John really encouraged the whole thing and was behind it entirely. And part of it was we were actually really low ranked when we started it. He was a blue belt, I was a white belt. Oh wow! Yeah, I got I got my purple belt the day we opened. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I was a, I was a three and a half year blue belt, and we had been training with John for like not quite a year, I don't think, but yeah, we we trained with John for quite a while, and then uh, we had our grand opening the first of the year. Yeah. Uh, it was like literally January first or second or something like that. And um, John came in. We did a seminar. There's actually like if you go to our Facebook page and you like go way back to our oldest photos. There's a bunch of really cool photos of our upstairs space. It was like super cold out, you know. And there were like 80 people in this tiny room rolling together. So it was like a freaking sauna. So like we opened the windows up and it was just like a fog machine of steam that just came flowing. And so like somebody was had like a really yeah. nice camera and there's like all these people rolling. It looks like they're rolling in like a fog machine room. Yeah. It's really really cool. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So the first day we opened before I ever even taught an official class in that in that uh, old space yeah I got my I got my purple belt and then uh, and then here we are four and a half years later got the black belt and we're doing the damn thing you know I didn't realize it was that early on that you had had opened up the school I guess because we had come across each other at blue belt right so I kind of knew who you were but you know didn't really know you know you as well but um, yeah, once you guys opened up, I can't remember the first time I came out here, probably two years ago or so. Yeah. I uh, came out for like a Friday night and I'm like, I got to get out of here at least, you know, once every couple months. Yeah. Which I, even, you know, more often than that, I would love to be out here just because, like I said, the training's different. It's high level. It's it's good stuff. So Absolutely. We love, we love having um, uh, people visit and train. Like I said, I, I encourage it for our students. You know, we I still do it I, on Sundays. Uh, we drive up to Iowa City and um, you know, occasionally we'd like to go up to like Cedar Rapids and stuff, but you know, I I cross train. I encourage other people to cross train, and and we like when people come here to cross train. It's uh, it's really nice to get those different styles, those different body types, those different um, challenges, you know. And so I love it when people come in and, and kind of keep things fresh and keep me on my toes, you know. Yeah, well, and that's a good thing about the Iowa Jiu Jitsu community is it seems like it's really willing to do that. Like we had a, a citywide open mat last week, and there were people that came from Omaha, Iowa City, like all over the metro area. I think there were like nine or 10 different gyms and like 50 or 60 different people yeah. that were there rolling all on the mats together. So it's cool that we're not, you know, segregated or closed off or divisive as much as it yeah. kind of can be in some of the bigger cities. Like the Iowa Jiu Jitsu community really seems to kind of band together and uh, try to make every, you know make each other better so that we can go out to those tournaments and do really well against the people from these big cities or these big schools that probably 
probably never heard of Iowa or even right. think that there's jujitsu here. And yeah. I think a lot of people would be surprised how many great grapplers and how many great schools and instructors and, and just, uh, you know, regular students that there are here in Iowa. Yeah. And I, I love saw, seeing those uh, Des Moines open city, open matter, what you got, whatever the name of it you guys did. Yeah. That, that was really cool. I, I, I love seeing that. But, you know, there are still some like old school schools gyms that are mm -hmm. like no you shouldn't cross train or yep. no creon nonsense <laughs> like you know if you're if you're guilt tripping and threatening your students to only stay in your own little corner of the gym or the you know area t to me it's just it's just you're scared that yep. they're going to see what better jujitsu looks like like if you're not worried about uh, the quality of the training at your school, then you're not going to worry about people going out and experiencing other jujitsu or other schools or other mm -hmm. training environments. I mean, you, you should want people to get better. And the way you get better is incorporating cross training. I wholeheartedly believe that you get better when you get challenged. Absolutely. Like if you're sitting and you're the big fish in the small pool at your, your local gym and you don't go out and, and compete or you don't go to other schools and get uh, hard training in with higher belts or, or just people who are better than you, then you're you're not gonna make any real progress. Like that was me for a long time. Like before we started training with John, like I was I was one of the big fish in the small pool. Like in the room, I I felt like I was freaking god. Like yeah. nobody could touch me. And then I'd go and compete, and I'd get my ass kicked. And I'm like, how is this possible? I'm winning at home all the time. And yeah. then it's like, oh wait, it's because there's people way better than you. And the way you get better is by learning from them. Is by challenging yourself and, put, and getting the training in with those types of people. And that was like. When I first went and trained with John, he murdered me. Yeah. And I was like, oh, so this is what it's like to roll the black belt. And you should know what it's like to roll the black belt. If you train somewhere and your coach doesn't show you what jujitsu is about, then how do you know that they can even do jujitsu? Like, I, I know that there's some people that are like older and they have injuries and stuff. That's that's totally different. Like some people physically have limitations and that totally makes sense. But like you, there should be some lead by example, you know, atmosphere right like you you should be getting on the mats and showing people what jujitsu is and and how to train and because like you get some people come in coming in the door and they're like going a thousand miles an hour right and how do you calm a person like that down you stick someone who knows how to do jujitsu on them and you hold them down and yep. you go hey freaking out and spazzing and being a psycho isn't how you get good at jujitsu it's about technique right and the best way to do that is with somebody with good jujitsu goes out and it shows that person you know you don't just send the 300 pound guy to go smash that person yeah you know, so uh, it, it's tough. You know, I just I just really want uh, like what you're describing. I want the whole Midwest Jiu Jitsu uh, community to be like together in a united front because like I, I love seeing like like the Padeo guys, like seeing Wiltsy and the whole whole Padeo team go out there and like do super well. Like I, bear, I every time I see him, like I say hello, I'm friendly with him. Like I'm not super close with them, yeah. but I root for them because they're like Midwest Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. And like, I obviously really root for Iowa Jiu Jitsu, but like, I still feel like a sense of like connection with the whole Midwest Jiu Jitsu movement, right? Yeah. And, and I love that and I want everyone to be like in a team front, right? I, I really hate this like old school, gross, like, I am God, call me sensei BS stuff. Like <laughs> just it's just old school stuff that I really, really just am so so sick of. And I uh I hope that, you know, as time goes on that people start to see through that. They start to want to cross train and experience, you know, some different styles of jujitsu because like like we were talking um before, it's like there's there's certain things that like I was never good at. And until I trained with John or until I trained with Matt. I would have never gotten good at them. Like my Baron Bola was absolutely horrible. Like I had no mechanics whatsoever. And you train with Matt, you learn pieces, right? And yeah. every piece you start to put together until it clicks. And then you have a whole nother, you know, part of the game that you can implement and it, and it can skyrocket your jujitsu, you know, but it takes time and it takes exposure. You know, you have to expose yourself to those, uh, to those experiences and, and whatnot, so. Yeah. And kind of going back to what you said, like the coolest part of putting together the events has always been watching people become friends, like they compete against each other right. and then they become friends or like cross training, training right. partners after the events, they start following each other on Instagram, even yeah. like guys from across the country, like guys from New York will start following a guy from yeah. Arizona or even just guys here in Iowa, they'll start cr cross, cross training together. Um, just being able to see that, you know, at least I played like a small part in that by putting together the event and they, they met at the event, competed against each other. And now they're like cross training or they're friends, sending memes back and forth, whatever it is. Yeah. Like, that's been one of the coolest things about the whole thing. Yeah. And that's the thing I love the most about jujitsu is like, and you and I talked about this before too, is like, this isn't the same as the MMA community, right? Like 
the MMA community has a lot of this machismo stuff. And like, I think that the jujitsu community it tends to be much more humble. So like I go to these tournaments and like, I'll be in some of these absolutes and I'll meet like the Jacob couch and like Mahmood, mood. And they're like the super, super nice guys, like yeah. very friendly. Like when you're competing, there's an intensity, you know, it's usually yeah. after the matches that yeah. everybody's like, Hey man, hey, good job today. You know what I mean? But like I, I message with those people and I only reason I've ever made that contact is because I went and I competed against them or I was, uh, watching them compete and had a conversation with them at the at the subspectrum or wherever tournament you know that we that we met at. So it, it's it's an awesome thing to be able to build some camaraderie through jujitsu. Um, you know, I think that so many people nowadays don't have this like thing that connects them to other people and like gives them something to strive toward to like better themselves or challenge themselves. Like some people are just like get off work, you go drink beer, you sit at home. You, you know what I mean? Like you don't have anything that challenges you that like builds camaraderie like I, I didn't grow up doing sports or anything like that so like when I got into jiu-jitsu jiu -jitsu, like one of the first things was I was like like I feel like I have this community now like this brotherhood of, of men and women that like I relate to and I care about and I, I think that like so many people nowadays are consumed into their phone and you know it, it can be very isolating and, and like it, it to me like everyone does it but it's just like if you're if you're sucked into that phone all the time like it's so bad for your mental health like getting out and like doing something with your body and doing something challenging and something that you can develop skills in is so important. Cause like, I hate just going to the gym and lifting weights. Like I've yeah. never <laughs> liked doing that, man. Yeah. But uh, you know, if, if it does it for you, that's, that's great that, you know, you have something to work on. But for me, that's jujitsu. And it's like an incremental thing that you're slowly like developing skills and seeing small bits of progress. And sometimes you suck, you know, sometimes you're dog shit, but Hey, <laughs> that's, that's how it goes too. And it's okay to lose. That, that's something that I, another thing I think people in jujitsu community, sometimes they get consumed with like having this, uh, like persona of like undefeatable like mm -hmm. I'm this Jesus of jiu-jitsu but yeah. like there's always a bigger fish like you're gonna lose sometimes like yeah. I've, I've lost plenty of times and I've accepted the fact that that's part of jiu-jitsu like it used to like just cripple me like I hated losing and like, I don't like losing now but it's a part of the game and like you have to be willing to put yourself out there and sometimes you're gonna lose yeah you know you'll never compete you'll if you always are like scared of that potential loss you get these guys that like like they'll compete like one time a year or something. And if they win, they're like, ah, I'm done for the year. And then like <laughs> they hide behind this little, well, I won this thing before, but no, I'm not gonna challenge myself again. I might expose myself as a phony. No, sometimes you lose and it's good for you to lose, you know? Well, and that's like a lot of the times the fans will kind of build up these athletes like they are undefeated or right. like, you know, undefeatable because they're used to like MMA where there are guys that are undefeated, you know, like a Khabib or even like boxing where someone is an undefeated their whole career, Floyd Mayweather. It's like that doesn't really happen in jiu-jitsu. There's no, I can't, I don't think there's one person in jiu-jitsu who's completely undefeated. Um, and you see it like even in the videos, like they'll see a video of like Jacob Couch or Wiltsy losing at right. Subspectrum and they're like, I didn't know these guys ever lost. Yeah. Like I thought they just won everything. And yeah. It's like, no man, if you're putting yourself out there as often as they are and as high level as they are, you're gonna take some losses. Yep. That's just the way it is. And they know that that's gonna happen and they're gonna come back better from it. Like yeah. I know Couch is gonna come back better from that loss to Austin Baker. And like, you know, anybody that competes at that high level, you know, if, if you're not making an improvement off of a loss, then you're just gonna stagnate and you're gonna fall back and you're never gonna improve, so. yeah. Yeah, and like Jacob's a, a fantastic example because like he's a he's like a super positive, like hardworking kid. He just seems like he lets it roll off his shoulders, he's ready to get back in the gym and just get back to training. And that's like the best attitude to have, you know. Don't uh, don't feel like you're just crippled and destroyed after a loss. You just roll roll it off the shoulders and get back in the gym and make yourself better. You know, just try to be one percent better the next day. That's all you can do, and that's that's a healthy attitude to have. It's like we were we were talking. I mentioned it earlier. We were talking just about like. You know, sometimes you, uh, I always, I'm, I'm, I tend to be very critical of like everything that I do, whether it's jujitsu or work or whatever, but like, there's always this happy medium of like analyzing, seeing the mistakes, correcting them, but still like seeing the good, seeing the positive and trying to be focused on being positive rather than consumed by that, that negativity. And yeah. Well, and looking how far, you know, how far we've come, you know, just even since the first time we ever competed against each other as blue belts. Oh, we were so far. bad. We were. I, <laughs> I, I, I don't think I have the full match videos, but if I looked at them, I'd probably be embarrassed. Oh, what yeah. in the hell? No, no, no. Do? I'm sure I deleted all I those. A Kimura from Half Guard. That's all I had. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sure I deleted all of those videos. I can't yeah. bear to watch the blue belt. I think the only one I do have is of you, uh, the spinning arm bar. The arm bar. Kimura, yeah. yeah. Hyper extending the arm. That was nice. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully your arm doesn't pop anymore. No, I think it's actually pretty good now That's it still good. does a little bit but 
I think that's just general jujitsu. Your elbows just click. Yeah, it's just that spazzy blue belt days, man. <laughs> um, so I guess we can kick it back to Josh. I feel like I haven't hardly talked to Josh at all. But I, don't, um, I don't talk as much. Don't talk as much. No. Um, so, like, what's your role as far as like being an instructor here at the gym, or you know, what classes do you teach? You do the the kids program, is that right? Yeah. So I teach all the kids uh, classes. So we do that three times a week, and then um, I generally fill in for adult classes here and there. Um, because we have a bunch of other guys who, who, who have, do some of the beginner classes and the kid stuff is interesting. It's, it's, it's incredibly frustrating and rewarding at the same time. Yeah. You know, I know you teach oh, yeah. kids. Yeah. yeah. I teach six, six kids classes a week. Yeah. So, I know so, what it's about. so <laughs> yeah, some days they amaze you and they're just, it's like, wow, I, like everybody's doing this right. And then you introduce just a little wrinkle and it's like, how did everybody become entirely unathletic and, <laughs> and, and not be able to do the simplest of things. And then three days later, they're all knocking out of the park. You're like, okay. They all got it. Yeah. And uh, what ages do you start with? So we have some like five and six year olds mm -hmm. and we go up to obviously whatever. All and then to teens. We, and then... Yeah. We start switching some of them to adults. But uh, I mean, we've had some good experiences, you know, some, some kids with some other types of issues, you know, I don't want to be specific, but, and then, parents talking to us and crying about how great their kids are doing and how they see a difference in confidence so that so you know you have those days where you're like man I, i'm just the worst instructor ever like <laughs> why aren't they better yeah. and then on that same day a parent you know starts crying because they're so happy that they're they see this confidence growing in their kids you know and then uh, yeah and you just can't you can't really i for me one of the things that jujitsu has taught me is that you just can't judge a book by its cover, right? So I mean, I remember one tournament, it might've been the first tournament that Nate and I actually went together. So I walk in and I see this guy walk in, he's like six, four, you know, and he's beautiful. He's this, <laughs> this, this athletic freak. And I'm like, oh shit, you know? Cause I knew, I mean, I could see how big he was. I'm like, okay, he's in my division, right? And then there's just like this short, like five foot eight dough boy. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna kick his ass. And the exact opposite happened, right? Yeah. Like the guy who looked like a, you know, a like yeah, he looked yeah, like, like a, he looked like Thor, right? Yeah, athlete. Like I'm gonna die. I beat him, and then the other guy just whipped the shit out of me. I'm like, hey, yeah, <laughs> great. So I, there's a lot of humility that comes with it, you know. And so I really enjoy that portion of it because you just, you know, you're either good or you're not. You can't hide, right? You either get it done or you don't. Yeah. And so there's no there's no real bullshit at the end of the day. You can't, you either perform or you don't. The guy kicks your ass or he doesn't, right? You survive or you don't, right? There's no there's no faking. And I think that's one of the great things about jiu-jitsu is you can't, you, you are who you are in it. And I think we spend, we all spend a little bit of part of our lives, you know, building our ego up in some way that's not based in reality. Yeah. And it all disappears in here. Right. right, and so I mean, I've never honestly. I don't. I mean, maybe I shouldn't say this on tape, but I've never beaten Nate, and it really pisses me off because he's a scrawny little bitch, <laughs> and he fucks me up every time. Right, so it's it's infuriating. So, especially since I know Vic's tapped him, and that really pisses me off. <laughs> That's never happened. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're out there at home and you're thinking jujitsu looks kind of cool, and I've always been interested then don't just sit on the couch anymore. Uh, come in, check us out, hit us up on Facebook. You can email us, uh, message the page directly. You can uh, come into the school. We usually unlock the doors at like quarter to six. So if you wanna come in on a weeknight, you can just show up and let us know, hey, I've always wanted to do this. Uh, let me get some more information and we can show you what it's all about and you can get on the mats and try it out for yourself. All right, guys, well, thank you for having us. Um, obviously great roles. Thanks for giving us the interview. Absolutely. Go ahead and get out of here. Let's go get some food. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's what it's about. Jiu-jitsu and food. <laughs>